Hi everyone, my name is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer and today I want to show you how to capture, stack, and process a mineral moon like this. Okay, so that's what we're going to try to produce today and I'm going to show you how we do that in three steps. Number one, I want to talk to you about how we capture the video that I used to make that. We're going to, I'll show you in short cap how to capture a short video of the moon. Then we're going to take that picture in the second step and stack it using a little program, a free program called Auto Stacker. Then we're going to process the picture in Photoshop to bring out the color. So let's get started. Let me show you how to capture a video of the moon. All right, I'm going to show you how I capture my lunar pictures real quick. I've got everything centered up here, obviously, on the moon in sharp cap. And uh, what I've got set here is uh, because of the focal ratio and stuff on my um, telescope, I, I can capture the entire, you know, sphere of the moon. So I've got it set on raw 16. Normally, if I was doing black and white, I'd just shoot raw 8. But on these, I shoot raw 16. I've reduced my capture area down to 2752 by 2754, just so that I have a, a little bit smaller picture. It's a little bit easier to um, um, process that way. My output format is a SEER file. That's a video file. You could use AVI or SEER. Um, I've got my exposure set to 15 milliseconds with a gain of 50 and uh, no brightness set. I've got the white uh, balance just uh, auto um, set on a uh, sharp cap. Then I came up here and uh, to my start capture and I'm capturing a thousand frames. And so basically what I've got here right now is 336 of 1000 frames and it will run there for a couple minutes. Once I collect a thousand frames, then we'll come back and I'll show you how I process it. All right, to stack our image, we're going to use a free program called Auto Stacker. Now there are actually several different programs that you can use for this. You could use uh, Registax, and I, I do use Registax sometimes for other lunar imaging, but not for stacking. I prefer Auto Stacker. I think most lunar imagers, most guys that have done this um, sort of prefer it. So that's the um, program that we're going to use. And all you've got to do is go over and get the file, The in my case it's an SER file, drag it over to open. All right. And by the way, I'm going to put the link for Auto Stacker so you can download it for free uh, in your computer. I'm going to back off the zoom here just a little bit so you can see it brings up a preview image of our, you know, one of the one of the frames. If I went through the frames here up here, you could go through all the different frames uh, that I've collected of the thousand frames. First thing you want to do, um, because we're going to be using a, a lunar image, we're going to click on surface. And then I'm going to click on analyze. And this is going to just take a couple of minutes here and run through and it is going to look at the various frames that I've captured and it's going to do an analysis as to the quality. It's going to try to arrange them in order of best to worst and um, if there's any really bad frames it will throw them out and it will give me a quick look at my, uh, it'll take a quick look at the stack. We'll give that just a second here. Now you'll see over here on my quality graph, about 50%, maybe a little bit more of my data is really above this line. That's what I'm looking for. In my case, well, I'm going to stack 50% of my images. But before I do that, I've got to come over here. I'm going to click on 24 and place grid. And notice what it'll do. It will put all these little red dots. These are the marks it's going to use so that it can orient all of my frames together okay once i've done that now with your image if you know you've got a lot more data above that 50 percent line or you know quality line 
Go ahead and stack more. Stack as much of a percentage as you can. If it's really bad data, then just stack a smaller percentage. And uh, then I'm going to click on Stack. And it's going to run through here. And this is going to take a couple of moments. But when it's done, what it's going to do is spit out for me an, a file in whatever folder that I had my SEER file in. It is going to put a new folder that says ASP50. And that's going to have my stacked image in it. This is all 1,000 frames that I took all stacked on top of each other and it brings out a lot of the quality. With that done, it's now time to go over and finish up this process in Photoshop. Okay, I've dragged my image, my auto stacker image, over into Photoshop, and this is what it looks like. And overall, this is already, for me at least, already a pretty clear picture. And I'm not going to do a lot of initial work on it here in Photoshop. But let me say this to you. If you needed to brighten up the image, of course, you could come up to Image, go to Adjustments, Brightness. You can adjust the brightness and contrast there to kind of fit your picture. I'm not going to do that in this particular image because overall, this looks pretty good to me. We will do some, you know, noise reduction and a few things once we're done. Um, and, uh, you know, once we're done with all of our processing. But right now, I'm going to leave it just about as it is. The first thing I'm going to do, because I know that when I start doing my saturation levels, I'm going to bring in a lot of noise. I'm going to go immediately up here to filter, and I'm going to go to noise, reduce noise. And then this is my settings here. I've got it set up to 10. You can adjust this depending on your image, preserve details. I definitely want it to preserve as many details as possible. Reduce color noise, sharpen the details just a little bit. I'm going to press OK. That's going to clean up some of the noise. This is where we add in our color into our picture, and it's really snazzy and simple way to do this, okay? I want you to come down here, and right underneath of, uh, under your layer section, you'll see uh, this little button, all right? Looks like a half circle, uh, yin and yang kind of a thing here. Click on it, go to Hue Saturation, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this bar up, until I start seeing, see how this is starting to change color just a little bit here? And I'm going to pull this up to say maybe around 40 or 50. You don't want to get too crazy with this. I think I could go to 50, okay? And then I'm going to, I'm going to close that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate that layer, all right? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to duplicate layer. And I'm going to see it brought out a little bit more color. And then I'm going to do that again. Brought out a little bit more color. Now what you've got to start watching here is how much can you really bring out of the picture. You'll notice there's probably a little bit too much blue. We're going to adjust that in just a moment. But you notice we're starting to get a little noise up here. So in this particular image, just about as far as I'm going to be able to push the color on this image. Some images you can really push. I'll show you some examples of that in a couple moments where you can get a lot more color out. It's just going to depend on the particular image that you've done. Then I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. Now what I want to do is go over to Camera Raw. And by the way, you might have to do that saturation level several times. You can experiment. I went pretty aggressive up to 50 there. If you do a little bit less of a you know saturation level, move that saturation up, then you'll you'll add more and more uh, um, frames. You'll or I'm sorry, layers to this. And you can think about that. You're just sort of building up like paint, just one after the other, building up your layers, and you'll start to get a little bit of color. Now, on this particular one, I'm going to be pretty pretty subtle. So I'm going to go to Camera Raw. And now what I want to do is maybe adjust this just a little bit. So I'm going to maybe come over here, and I'm going to pull a little bit of that blue down, temperature down, and go over a little bit, warm it up just a slight bit. And you'll see that starts kind of changing what you're seeing over here, okay? Again, if I pulled up the saturation or vibrance levels, that will start to kind of uh, darken those areas up a lot. And I don't want to do too much of that. I'm going to bring out a little bit more, uh, a little dehaze and a little clarity. All right. 
And then I am going to adjust this color. I don't like this light blue, but I'll show you how to adjust that in just a couple of minutes. But basically, you can see what I've done here. I'm starting to just bring a little bit of this out. I could adjust. I could bring my whites down a little bit because you do have a lot of white in this uh, in this particular on, on pictures of the moon. You bring that down a little bit. Um, you could take your shadows and darken those if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that too much in this picture, but you might want to. And you'll see a little bit of the you know stuff down here starting to pop out. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's happening. All right. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to sharpen my details just a little bit. You don't want to over sharpen lunar images or they start to kind of look sort of fake and sort of weird. But I I like to borderline that. I like I like my images fairly sharp when I'm doing the moon. I might pull the detail up here just a little bit. You can start seeing that we've got a little bit of color coming down in here. I'm going to pull I'm going to try to get a little color noise out. Maybe a little bit of the luminance noise. All right. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with what that's looking like so far. You can see it brought out a little bit of the brown, but I want to try to cool. I want to try to fix up that this this down in here. See this this light blue that's kind of showing up. Honestly, I've got this area around here a little bit overexposed, and uh, that's a problem with the moon. It, it, it's a I, I do that a lot. I need to work on getting that. I'm going to try to take a little bit of that light blue out by bringing up the red just a tad. Now you can see what that starts to do. And I'm going to drop a little bit of this blue out. And that brought it out just a little bit better. Uh, again, you can play with these colors as much as you want. I'm pretty satisfied with that picture. Um, I'm going to pull it back out here so you can kind of see the whole thing. I'm kind of satisfied with that on this particular image, and um, I'm going to settle for that, flatten this, and then save it. But you can play around, and that's how you do a Keller moon. Let me show you a few other examples of Keller moon or uh, mineral moons that I've done, and give you an idea of what's possible. And then you make your image the way you want to make it. All right, guys. I hope that was uh, helpful to you, and that you enjoyed the video. Here's a few other images of mineral moons that I've done in recent months.